And if if the Marx had access to the real thing, if they could go to another religious cult like the Eleusinian Mysteries and have a real sacrament, it would be patently obvious that what the Christians were selling was a type of a shell game. Now, there's a real magic drug, prestidigitation. Uh, the, they were the 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 wafers and wine were magically transmogrified into a sacrament. And this actually wasn't codified in Catholic dogma until the 11th century as the doctrine of transubstantiation, which said basically that the priest with his back to the congregation and mumbling in a low voice in Latin some words over over the, the bread and the wine would magically transmogrify them into a sacrament. So... Uh, so it, it's not a coincidence, or not even surprising either, that this 1,000-year reign of terror that I call the Pharmacratic Inquisition, directed against the surviving entheogen cults in Europe, uh, coincides with what we call the Dark Ages. Uh, this, uh, the, the destruction of, in, in order to suppress this, they had to destroy all the ancient art and literature referring to this, and since it was a fundamental feature of ancient thought, uh, basically. Uh, this set humankind back a millennium, and uh, the reign of terror came to a, uh, a, a type of a climax in the beginning of the 13th century with the Albigensian Crusades, uh, which were directed against the Albigensians or Cathari, who were survivors, uh, they were Manichaeans living in Europe, and this was a very important uh, religion competing with Christianity which traced its ancestry back to the Indo-Aryans, to the, the uh, Zoroastrian faith, and was almost certainly based on the ingestion of an entheogenic sacrament, probably a mushroom, and likely Amanita muscaria. And uh, the, the very ferocity of the Albigensian Crusade, in which a million people were killed in the south of France and adjacent areas of Catalonia and Euskadi or the Basque country, testifies to the importance of this to the Catholic Church. It was decreed, I think, in the year 12... Nine by uh, Pope Innocent III. It was the first internal crusade, or the first crusade directed inside of Europe. And of course, what we know as the witchcraft, uh, <coughs> excuse me, epidemics and so forth, were also uh, uh, involved with this. They were they were uh, destroying surviving um, uh, shamans, midwives, herbalists, magicians, and so forth uh, for the succeeding centuries. And so by the time the, the 16th century drew round, Europe had been pretty much beaten into submission, and the memory of shamanic ecstasy or of personal religious experiences, ecstatic experiences catalyzed by true sacraments, by the entheogens, had been virtually expunged and uh, uh, wiped off the face of the earth. And the, the, the theocracy would have succeeded in their attempt to really efface this from human memory had it not been for the fact that uh, that, that in the 16th century, Europeans, or actually late 15th century, but especially in the 16th century, Europeans began to wash up on the shores of the Americas. And there they found the age of entheogens in full flower. It was as though they had gone back in a time capsule a thousand years, or perhaps 1,500 years, and uh, suddenly the, enthe the entheogenic uh, use of entheogens was state religion. It was common. It was an everyday occurrence. So uh, the proceeding was started to uh, wipe that out in the New World. Exactly. And so <clears throat> what happened was quite predictable. Um, the, the, the Inquisition was established in Mexico in 1578. Uh, well, the, the, the Aztecs or the Mexicas were conquered by Cortez's men in 1521, and their religion was very barbarous in many ways, uh, but it also had a very beautiful and sublime elements, and the Aztecs were a sort of an historical aberration in Mesoamerica anyway. Their, their, the other tribes around them weren't nearly as given to mass sacrifice as they were. But the, the Spaniards used their, their bloodlust for sacrifice as a pretext to destroy other aspects of their culture, and they branded the entheogenic communion as uh, a diabolical communion, as a heresy, and the Inquisition was established in 1578. In the year 1620, uh, I think the 19th of June, the Inquisition formally decreed that the use of peyote and similar plant sacraments was a heresy and that the Inquisition would proceed against um, persons that continued using these sacraments uh, as against persons suspect in the Holy Catholic faith. Those were their exact words. And, uh, and it was no hollow uh, threat. There were 
from the annals of the Inquisition just in Mexico, and this, there were p parallels to this in, in other countries, there were at least uh, something like 90 autos de fe directed against the use of peyote. There were uh, a similar amount for mushrooms and many more for ololiuki seeds. Uh, and so uh, this uh, went on and on, and they attempted to stamp it out. Unfortunately, because of uh, the Mexican Revolution, other political problems, the Catholic uh, religion ran out of steam in Mexico sometime around the middle of the 19th century, and uh, they really failed in their attempt to eliminate this, and it survived in, in, uh, in isolated areas. But there are several uh, prominent examples of, the, uh, of this. For example, the Huichol people continued to use peyote, but they were from uh, probably from San Luis Potosí originally from the plains, and they took refuge in the remote uh, area where they live now in, in Nayarit and Durango, uh, the Sierra Huichola, and now they have to make this lengthy pilgrimage to their original homeland to get peyote. Uh, but they had to hide out in the mountains in order to escape the persecution of the Spaniards and continue to... to to adopt this religion. It also survived in the remote parts of the Sierra Madre among people like the Zapotec and the Mazatec and the Mije and so forth. And so uh, I might mention, though, that the, the Protestant churches have tried to take up the slack where the, where the Catholics left off, and they've been, uh, they've been trying to stamp this out as vigorously as possible. With the help of the Supreme Court of the United States. And other uh, elements. And, other and so, so the, and nevertheless, um, the the Pharmocratic Inquisition, while it was very uh, successful in Europe and uh, certainly very destructive to the peoples of the New World, it did not succeed in destroying this completely. This survived as in a time capsule in isolated areas, waiting to be rediscovered and, uh, by the scientific world. And that's what happened in a dramatic way in 1955 when Gordon Wasson met Maria Sabina and ingested the psilocybin mushrooms. And he was prepared. He, he was looking, as he said, he went to Mexico as a pilgrim seeking the grail. His interest was not in anthropological study. His interest was in learning what a sacrament was and trying it and, uh, and understanding the essence of ancient religion. And so what the third phase of my theory is what I call the entheogenic reformation. And that involves this, what we're currently living now, a rediscovery of these substances for the modern world and an interest in archaic religion and shamanism that's really quite extraordinary. And uh, it's not something exclusively of the Western world and only related to the scientific world. Uh, there are several, on three different continents, there are important religious movements, syncretic religious movements, in which uh, nominally Christian religions have adopted shamanic inebriance as the sacrament in Christian liturgy. The most, the example best known to us is the, the Native American Church of North America and the peyote religion, which um, began to coalesce in the 1870s, 1880s. It was first incorporated legally as a religion in Oklahoma in 1916, and surprisingly in 1994 was legalized on a federal level in the United States <clears throat> when President Clinton signed uh, the, uh, an amendment to the American Indian Religious Freedom Act of 1986, specifically legalizing this for Indians in the United States. So there's one example. Now I say nominally Christian. Some of the some of the um, some would say that the Christianity in this case is only superficial, as Weston Labar did, or would say that it's it's only a gloss to impress the authorities and sneak it by the the Christian uh, right and so forth. But nevertheless, um, the stated purpose of the Native American church is to foster the Christian religion with the peyote sacrament. And so you have the situation where the Eucharist is no longer bread and wine, but rather dried peyote or peyote tea. Well, now that's one example. Another example roughly contemporaneous with that is from Africa, from uh, Western or Equatorial Africa, especially in Gabon. And uh, this is the Bwiti religion, which started mainly among the Fang people of Gabon. And this is also, they've been subjected to missionary activity and so forth. And it's also a Christian religion in which powdered root of iboga, or tabernanthi iboga, is used as the Eucharist. Very specifically, in this case, identified as the Eucharist. And uh, in fact, the Bwitists even say that we are the true Christians that the Catholics have, have lost the way that leads you to Christ. They've lost the entheogen. Uh, 